Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the channel. Team Sky first emerged on the pro cycling scene in 2010 as an exciting new project to bring about the first British Tour de France winner. And they did so in 2012 with Bradley Wiggins and have continued to dominate the sport as a whole, winning the Giro d'Italia once, the Tour de France seven times, and the Vuelta de España on two occasions, including winning dozens of smaller stage races as well. Of course, this success has also been a byproduct of their financial might, which only increased in 2019 when Jim Ratcliffe bought Team Sky and renamed it after his chemical company, Ineos. But of course, cycling is an individual sport practiced by teams. So this means in order to create this success, you also need a plethora of brilliant riders to be the domestiques. So in today's video, we're going to look back at seven riders who disappeared after joining Team Sky slash Ineos. First on our list, we have the talented American climber, Joe Dombrowski, who was signed by Team Sky in 2013 alongside his countryman, Ian Boswell, from the exciting under 23 Livestrong team. And Joe Dombrowski was seen as one of the hottest assets in the sport as he had just won the under 23 Giro d'Italia in front of the future Vuelta España champion and home favorite, Fabio. During the 2013 season, Dombrowski assisted Chris Froome in the Torreno Adriatico and also the Tour of Oman where he went on to take the win. Unfortunately, in the 2014 season, Dombrowski had to undergo surgery as he had problems with his blood flow in his left leg via the lilac archery following that year's Tour de Suisse. Joe Dombrowski left the British outfit in 2015, not having achieved much at Team Sky and headed to Team Cannondale Garmin where he stayed until the 2020 season. And in that time, he managed to win the Tour of Utah and finish fourth in the Tour of California in 2014. But these results were definitely not a true reflection of the huge expectation that were on the talented American's shoulders when he joined Team Sky. Diego Rosa is the next rider on the list and he joined Team Sky in 2017 and arrived from Astana having had the best season of his career where he had won stage 5 plus the mountain classification at that year's Tour of the Basque Country. Furthermore, he also podium at the Giro di Lombardia and even finished 10th in Liège, Bastogne Liège, plus on top of that finishing 8th overall in the Criterium du Dauphiné. He stayed with Team Sky until 2019 and in that time he managed to win the overall at the Copy e Bartoli stage race in 2019 and won the Mountains jersey in the Tour of Poland but he didn't manage to achieve the same kind of success that he did in the 2016 season but a little consolation prize for Rosa was that he was actually part of the Team Sky that helped Chris Froome win the 2016 Tour de France. Following his move in 2020 to Akeg Samsic, he has somewhat managed to achieve some results, even managing to finish 10th in the 2020 Strada Bianchi. Next on our list, we have the 1 meter 69 centimeter tall French climber that is Kenny Ellison, who signed with Team Sky after a few quiet seasons with FDJ, and the move was very positive for the Frenchman, as Sky had just announced that they wanted to be the first team to win the Tour de France with a French rider since Bernard Hinault. However, this did not come to pass and for the three seasons, Kenny Alisson didn't even ride the Tour de France and he only managed to podium a few minor stage races such as the Herald Tour in 2017 and the Tour de Occitan in 2018, a far call from his 2013 stage win success in the Vuelta España on the Anglo route. But one explanation for this was that Kenny Ellison was largely used as a mountain domestique in many races and was even part of the team that helped Chris Froome with his impressive 2018 Giro d'Italia. For the 2020 season, he joined Trek Segafredo where he finally rode the Tour de France again and managed to finish in 25th place despite helping Richie Port reach his first ever podium in his career at the Tour de France. David de la Cruz is our next rider and he joined Team Sky in 2018 from Quickstep Floors after having some success in the tour of the Basque Country in 2017, finishing fourth overall and winning stage five. Furthermore, he also won the final stage of that year's Paris-Nice. And on the Grand Tour front, he even finished seventh in the 2016 Vuelta España. However, when he joined Team Sky, he was largely used as a mountain domestique as well. And his best result was a stage win in the 2018 Paris-Nice and he was part of Chris Froome's Giro d'Italia triumph but he left Ineos and he cited the reason why he left was that he didn't find his space 
in the team and UAE, his new team, truly believed in him. With UAE, he has already managed some success, winning the Masters jersey in the Criterium de Dauphine in 2020, plus finishing 7th in the 2020 Vuelta España. On top of that, he was also the best mountain domestique for Tadej Pogacar in his 2020 Tour de France triumph. Leopold Koenig is our next rider to consider and he was a rising star when he joined Team Sky in 2015 as he had just finished 7th in the 2014 Tour de France, whilst riding for the pro continental team team netab koenig managed to finish sixth at the following giro d'italia which was also his first grand tour with team sky and thereby sealed his impressive grand tour top 10 set having finished top 10 in the two other grand tours as well but from here it was downhill from koenig as his only major result was winning his national time trial title and he subsequently rejoined his former team which was now named Bora Hansgro and he retired at the end of 2019. Next on our list we have Wout Pools and Wout Pools filled the gap that was left after Froome left Wigan's side as his lieutenant and thereby Froome required a lieutenant of his own after his previous lieutenant Richie Port left for BMC at the end of 2015 and this was exactly where Wout Pools fitted in. He was part of Chris Froome's 2015 and 2016 wins in the Tour de France as well as helping Garen Thomas win his 2018 Tour de France. And maybe it's a bit unfair to put Pools on this list as he did win Liège Baston Liège back in 2016 while at Sky slash Ineos and he also won various stage wins in big stage races such as Criterium de Dauphine, Torino Adriatico, Paris Nice, Walter a Catalonia and plenty of stages at the Tour of Britain. But the question remains, with his talent in the mountains, could he have done something better in terms of the GC and definitely in Grand Tours? In the 2020 season, he left Ineos Grandiers in favour of Bahrain McLaren. And here we saw exactly that. He managed to finish sixth in that year's Vuelta España. And this could have been more the kind of Palmares that he would have had if he hadn't sacrificed his GC chances at Sky slash Ineos. The final rider on our list is Christopher Halverson, who was seen as a super talent in 2016 following his under 23 world championship title in the road race, finishing ahead of future stars such as Pascal Ackerman and Jakob Maretzko in Doha. Impressively, the young Norwegian managed to win the Handsam Classic riding for Team Yoka and even won the third stage of the Tour de l'Avenir that year, including the points classification. The Norwegian star in the making joined Team Sky in 2018 and he was due to make his Team Sky debut in the 2018 Tour of Down Under, leading his new team in the sprints. However, on the 14th of January, Halverson crashed at the People's Choice Classic, fracturing his hand and thereby ruling him out of the Tour Down Under. In the two seasons with Team Sky, he didn't quite live up to expectations on his shoulders, only winning the sixth stage of the 2019 Tour of Norway and the fifth stage in the 2000 Herald Sun Tour. After a season with EF Education, he joined the very exciting Norwegian project Uno X development team and maybe here Halverson can really showcase his true potential. So looking at this list, they're all definitely talented riders. So why would they disappear at Ineos slash Sky? The main reason is that Ineos is such a focused team that each rider do have their particular job. And many of these riders, of course, were mountain domestiques and thereby sacrifice the chance of them contesting the stages themselves. And maybe for Halverson, they just didn't fit as a sprinter's team. That's basically it for this video. Make sure to let me know down below what you think of this list. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the things that we're doing. And of course, thank you for watching and have a nice day.